the entrance antiphon. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, declare it in the distant lands. Behold, our Savior will come, and ye no longer fear. Special attention to today's Mass is being offered for Billy Plumson. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mission. I confess that all my God and to you, my brothers and sisters, I have been in my heart. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exalt. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say those whose hearts are frightened. Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened. The ears of the deaf be clear. Then will the lame leap like a stag then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The abode where the jackals lurk will be a marsh for the reed and the, the papyrus. A highway will be there called the Holy Way. No one, no one unclean may pass over it, nor fools go astray on it. No lion will be there, nor beast of prey go up to be met upon it. For it is for those with a journey to make, and on it the redeemed will walk. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. The responsorial song, I will hear what God proclaims. The Lord, when he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him glory dwelling in our land, our God will come to save us. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. 
The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and salvation along the way of his steps. Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law, who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, were sitting there, and the power of the Lord was with him for healing. And some men brought on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed. They were trying to bring him in and seat him in his presence. But not finding a way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on a stretcher through the tiles, into the middle in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, As for you, your sins are forgiven. Then the scribes and Pharisees began to ask themselves, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who but God alone can forgive sins? Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them in reply, what are you thinking in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He stood up immediately before him, picked up what he had been lying on, and went home glorifying God. Then astonishment seized them all, and they glorified God. And struck with awe, they said, We have seen incredible things today. The Gospel of the Lord. Yesterday's Gospel at Sunday Mass started out with some historical facts, and I recounted how history wasn't my favorite subject growing up, and often I would begin history lessons with, how does this apply to me, this history? Um, hopefully I did an okay job yesterday showing that the Word of God, uh, the Gospel, applies to all of us in our lives. I did, however, enjoy English in school. I like to analyze poetry and read literature, um, I like the poetic devices the authors use, um, such as personification, where they give like a human characteristic to something that is not human. When a poet says something like, the sun sang the glory of God. We know the sun can't sing, but we know its beauty can move our hearts to sing glory to God ourselves. In fact, all of God's creation can move our minds and hearts to Him. The creative world indirectly points us to God, our Creator. We all have something in our lives that moves our hearts to God. Maybe it's beautiful weather, or the smile of a child or grandchild. Whatever it is, God's creation heals our souls and moves our minds to Him. In our first reading, Isaiah writes in a beautiful poetic style. And we hear a lot from Isaiah during this uh, season of Advent. His readings are, are deep and rich and are, are good for reflection and prayer. Isaiah writes, The desert and the parched land will exalt. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. He gives human characteristics to the land, saying that they will exalt and rejoice. He's predicting the coming of the Messiah. 
the coming when Jesus will be, su when, will be such a glorious day that even the desert and the land will sing praise to God. Isaiah was pointing the Israelites to the coming of the Messiah, Jesus. And I'm sure on that day that he was born, the whole world rejoiced in glory. Creation definitely indirectly points us to God. But Jesus, our Savior, directly links us to God. Jesus became man to be the mediator between God and us. When Jesus comes to meet us again, there will be great joy and gladness, and sorrow and mourning will flee. When he comes again, we'll see him face to face in all his splendid glory. We won't need creation to point us indirectly to God. We'll see the face of Christ in God, in Jesus. But brothers and sisters, the good news is we don't have to wait for his second coming. Busy. He comes to us every day. He comes to us in our pains and struggles. He comes to us in the joys of our days, in the faces of those we love, and in the beauty of creation. And most of all, Jesus comes to us in the Eucharist. And when he does, he heals our pains and our sufferings, and he says to us, take up your stretcher and walk. Your faith has saved you. So as you receive our Lord today in the Eucharist, allow him to heal the pains of your heart. And let your heart exult in our God, our God who comes to save us. of the church, may the Lord continue to strengthen them in their efforts to help the people of God grow in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For elected officials, may God grant them fortitude in fighting for what is right and just in service to their constituents. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all who have suffered as a result of violence or abuse. May God's healing love comfort and support them. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our community, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving and faithful God, you alone heal and comfort our hearts. We open them to you so that we may prepare for the coming of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be you, Lord God, of all creation. And through your goodness, we have received the bread of hope. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Brothers and sisters, 
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among the gifts you give us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, and Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing a hymn of your glory as without end we pray. Holy similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Greg Prayer Bishop, Cherie's assisting bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, profit us we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Saint Michael, we are you.